What is private banking? In this video, I'm gonna talk about what is private banking? Is it right for you? And you better get a pen and paper because this is a sophisticated one. It's not difficult, it's just different and you're gonna to wanna to do it. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five specific things. Number one, what is private banking? Number two, how do you qualify for it? Number three is probably my favorite, let the banks find you, which there's just one way that you have to do that, so stay tuned for that. Number four, how do you do it holistically? It's what I did, right? I've been private banking for now a couple decades. How do you do that? And then number five, which is my favorite, is how do you kill the banker? The very guy who's gonna give you the private banking. So let's begin. So to start off, I'm actually gonna read exactly what private banking is. So we're gonna get to the definition. Private banking refers to a type of banking and financial service offered by certain banks to only high net worth individuals. So immediately some of you are gonna turn this off and say, well, I'm not high net worth. Well, let's just remind you that if you make 80,000 or more in the United States, and you can just proportionalize that to whatever your you know, Forex is, 80,000 or more puts you in the top 25% of income earners. So it's not that big a deal. Right? And then to be accredited, you have to make 200,000 or more, or 350 as a couple. And you say, well, what's accredited status? Well, that's your ability to invest in anything you want. Right? You can invest like a shark. You can invest in very alternative investments. So we'll come to that on a different video. And at any time, if you have a question about something, go up to my search bar, put in what you wanna look for, and I'm just gonna keep doing videos helping you get financially literate. So what is private banking? Well, it's for high net worth individuals. And do you qualify or not? So how do you qualify? And do you even want this? I'm gonna say yes. I've had private banking for, like I said, a couple decades. So the advantages are privacy. That's number one. So as you grow in net worth, right? So you get to 500,000, a million. Typically you need about a million to get into private banking. And that means you're putting in deposits. So some of you who are not millionaires, let's be really clear, you could do a million in deposits. So even if you own a company and you're doing a million dollars of gross revenue, those are deposits in the banks, which by the way, a little bank info, they get to 10x that at the central bank. So you give a deposit of a million, you've now given the bank the right to have loans of nine to $10 million. That's the benefit you provide to a bank. So why is private banking so critical and why do they offer it? Well, first of all, you're assigned to one person or typically a small team that look at your net worth and what you're doing. You get discounts on certain products and services. And I'll tell you a story about my laundry mat in a minute, but I wanna continue advantages. Again, privacy is critical. You get private banker that's going to be assigned to you and your family. You get discounts on products. And then number four, you get discounts on fees, right? So depending on how you do it with them, you get discounts. Now, depending on what you invest in, which is a little bit different, they're going to actually charge you more. So it does kind of wash out. But here's the great story because I knew this 10x banking rule. And it's just shocking that most people don't realize that when you give a bank, even a hundred thousand, if your business is making a hundred, you've now given the bank the right to go up and grab a million bucks. And you say, well, what do they do with it? Well, it's called an arbitrage. That's how the banks make money. So then they give it out to consumer loans. So people who don't have as good a credit, they can charge them eight, nine, 10 in this interest environment, back up to 12 and 15% for a car loan, for a computer loan, for a home improvement loan, whatever you want. So that's how banks make money is on their lendability and right, their ability to do loans. Now back to you in private banking. Why is it important? Privacy, I would say is number one. When I wanted to buy laundromats, right? Because of my kid's book and wanting to have some kid-friendly businesses, I thought a laundromat would be fun. So we, I went into the bank knowing that I'd put millions into the bank and I gave them a little spreadsheet. And I said, so this is how I've helped you. Because of my deposits, gross deposits. So those of you who aren't millionaires, this still applies to you. If you, right, if you made 100, 200, they're gonna get a million, two million. So keep that formula in mind. So you're gonna remind them of how much you've allowed them to go get loans for the local community. And so in exchange, I said, so I want a 0% loan. This was way back in the day when I lived in Marin County, California. And they looked at me, they died laughing. They said, aren't you cute? And I said, well, I am, but I'm serious. And there's this thing where the banks have to go to committee to get loans approved. So they would go to committee and I came back and I got a 2% loan for a $200,000 laundromat. Now the banker said to me, well, why don't you use your own money? You have 200,000 in the bank. I said, well, because that's invested at 10, 12, 15, it's invested. I don't want to divest it and put it into cash to give it to you. you 
can give me your money at 2% and I'm going to go buy a laundromat. And when we're all done, I'm going to keep the cash flow. I'm going to pay your 2% and then I'm going to pay you all back. And I get to keep the profit. That's other people's money at the finest source. And it's the cheapest money. But for those of you, and I do want to just mention this because I know some of you are really, because of our environment right now, wanting to go off grid. This is the stuff that you want to stay on grid. So for those of you who want to go off grid, there's a portion of you or some family member that I believe should stay in this. The financial system is what qualifies you. Credit, your credit's dependent on it. Your ability to use the system, make money, spend money, pay off credit cards. That's what creates you as a high value client. The only disadvantages again, is once you start doing this, like I've had private bankers change, and then I actually moved from Marin to Lake Tahoe, Nevada. So I had to move and get a new banker. So you have to kind of get them all started up and where they make some of their money back with you is if you buy their investment products, they're gonna charge you sometimes a bigger management fee. So again, it's all relative, highly encourage you to do it. Number three, let the banks find you. Once you have a million in deposits, believe me, with all the AI and the data sourcing out there, they'll come find you, right? Banks are motivated to find you and find your deposits. You know, and the people who are uneducated, which is most of the people, I mean, they'll come in for a little iPad or, you know, way back in the day, they'd come in and open a deposit and just so you could have a toaster or a coffee maker. I mean, it's crazy the little crap that people would, banks would give you because most people walk around uneducated, financially illiterate, have no clue. You don't go in for a little tchotchke and a little toy. You got to go in financially literate saying, bank, I'm giving you the right to have my deposits and we're going to have a relationship. So all this online banking, I'm not a fan. I like the face-to-face -face relationships. So you can do some of that. I'm about to be part of a big kids bank called Gravy Stack, super fun. But you know what? Right down the road at that local bank, I have a local private banker and you want one too. Now, number four, how do you do it holistically and organically? Well, this goes to everything I teach is you need to do it through companies and trust structures. So the minute you're 18 and you're a legal adult, you can have an LLC. That LLC should be held in trust. If it's not held in trust, then whatever you have upon death will go to probate at your state. In fact, I have a video recording with one of my colleagues and partners. It's called, Don't Let Your State Have Your Estate. And it's a very cool, in fact, I'll give you that as a gift at the end, but you have to stay all the way to the end to get the little link. So, in which by the way, while you're like hanging out here, why don't you subscribe to my channel? Like click the little notification button, be here every day. All I want if for you is 10 to 15 minutes for financial literacy. So if you're serious, you're gonna be here every morning. We're out here Monday through Friday. It only takes 10 to 15 minutes. And then this is how you come home at night, have your whole family. We have our whole office listen to it. What did you learn? What are you gonna do different about your financial literacy? All right, so that's just a little side note. Now back to banking. When you have an LLC and it's held in trust, Upon your passing, you won't go to probate. Probate's a big deal. I was uh, down in a, a very local small town just recently talking to an older gentleman about really being a partner in a business. And I said, so are you incorporated? And he said, no, I've been a sole proprietor for over 20 years, which is not uncommon for a lot of people They were really misled. And I'm gonna say, as one of my partners says, by CPAs, by accountants, by lawyers who have a license to steal. They don't know it, they don't live it, so they don't tell you the truth. So I don't know that they're lying to you. I just don't think they really have engaged at the level that you can actually be financially literate and use the financial system. So anyway, if you don't have a trust, so he's this whole prior the whole time. And he said, well, I don't need a trust. My lawyer said I need, I, I will would handle. I said, no way. A will's just how you give away your things. Like who gets my glasses? Who gets this diamond ring? Who gets a you know piece of jewelry? Who gets the couch? Who gets the cars? That's what a will does. It gives your stuff away to the people you want to give your stuff to. Now you can actually be misled and a lot of information on the internet is misleading about a will or a trust. A will, in my mind, in the simplest terms, is just giving your stuff away. The trust is the machine. That's the big daddy that protects you from the state, keeps you from going to probate. So even if you're only worth 100,000, or you say you're not making a lot, but you have a quarter million dollar life insurance policy, you wanna have a trust because if you don't, half of that, depending on the state, the lowest I've seen is maybe 30%, would go to the state in probate fees. So why would you even be worth 100,000 to give 30,000 back to your state? Why wouldn't you give all 100 to whoever you want your heirs to have it? So I'm an avid fan of LLCs held in trusts. So upon passing, that's how you pass generational wealth. It is imperative. And inside of all of that, you do private banking. And when you grow up and you're a multimillionaire, you then have your investment portfolio turns into what's called a family office. Another day, another time, another video on that one. But it starts with private banking. It starts with you becoming an entity. And if you're a super beginner out there listening, go back to my search bar again. LLCs, how do I start a side hustle? How do I make $100,000? I have a guaranteed program that will make you 100 grand in one year. Guaranteed. 
I'll give you your money back if it doesn't, but you have to do everything I say. And some of you can't be even here five days a week. So one last thing I do wanna say about private banking and the holistic approach is the big way to do generational wealth and private banking is you get a very specific kind of bank insurance. So bank level insurance allows you to do life insurance. So your LLC, your trust will be tied into this life insurance upon your passing all of that insurance gets loaded up into your trust, which then gets disseminated to your heirs. The Rockefeller family did it the best and still today have held that kind of wealth for generations and generations. So where does this all come from, right? So private banking in my mind, I mean, has always been really the start of an entrepreneur. Like that needs to be an entrepreneurial goal is that I'm gonna be a private banker and then an investor. And way back in 1930s, I'm gonna actually tell you a little story about killing the banker. It says, uh, you know, how do you kill the banker? So I'm actually gonna read some of this. So kill the banker in honor of William, it's called Wild Bill Langer, two-time governor of North Dakota, during the 30s was a huge supporter of farming and the Farm Holiday Association. So coming from, you know, a farm community in Nebraska, you know, a lot of the farmers don't see themselves as entrepreneurs, right? They're on second, third, fourth, fifth generation of farms by this point. And in the thirties, they weren't getting their, their crop share, right? Whether it was corn or, uh, you know, if they had cattle, whatever they had, they weren't getting fair pricing. And that has happened many times. I remember like growing up in the 1980s when interest rates were out of control and inflation was out of control. Well, we're there folks, by the way, we're in 2022. We're not in the 1980s or thirties and we're experiencing it now. And I don't know how some of you are living without being, I wouldn't say in a panic, but very urgent about making money. So again, being an entrepreneur, being getting an LLC, getting the trust where you can be your own bank, you can control your own money and you have the privacy of that. So what happened in the 1930s with the kill the, kill the banker, is literally that's what happened. In Iowa, a whole bunch of farmers, 1933 was the height of the Great Depression and the financial bubble on Wall Street was out of control. So literally farmers were killing bankers. They would drag them out of the bank, they would hang them and they would create you know, because the bankers were taking a lot. So, I mean, here's how rough it got. I mean, literally the bankers were trying to take the land away of the very thing that the farmers were using for the, the wheat, the ham, the eggs, everything. And so here's a fun saying that I want to just quote is uh, a lot of them said, you know, we'll eat our wheat, ham and eggs. Well, you know, the bankers can eat their gold. And, you know, it, this spins off a lot of conversations. I love Creature from Jekyll Island, which talks about how the banking system was formed and more importantly, I love investing off Wall Street. My son just graduated from Georgia Southern with a finance and accounting degree. And he said, you know, mom, I finally get what you do. You invest off Wall Street in alternatives. I said, always. I've seen it in, when I was 18, 19 years old, reading Think and Grow Rich and really diving into financial literacy. Wall Street will control you forever. And as a lot of you say, well, that's why I don't wanna be in the banking system. So the banking system, yes, it's a part of Wall Street. Investing is different than banking. There is a difference, right? You're gonna put deposits in, you're gonna have a private bank and you're gonna be able to move it. Now, for those of you who are crypto and NFT people, I am too. I'm probably not as big as some of you that are out there, but all the banks are gonna get their own currencies. The United States countries will have their currency. It's just going to move towards that kind of more digital access. The United States has been way behind. I mean, there's countries where they haven't had actual checks, signed checks for a long time. They've been moving in electronic formats of banking for years. U.S. is kind of catching up, finally. So private banking, do you need it? I think you absolutely do. It's a goal to strive for, just like being an accredited investor. So if this is interesting to you, as you can tell, there's a lot of tentacles to this. If you're interested in this being a goal, I want you to go to asklaurel.com. I'm starting a new membership that if you want to ask me a personal question, I have a quick little membership that you can join, or you can just go to Ask Laurel and ask any free question. I have a team that is on this. I have six people dedicated to this team. They'll be answering every question. The yes will be sending you right back here to YouTube. I have a lot of answers here. So, you know, use the search bar, share this with other people. Don't just come back after a YouTube video with me and ask your friends and family what they think. They don't know either. Have them engage. So share this video. Let's get a lot of people in a new conversation about money. The one that should have been around for decades. So join private banking. Let me tell you how. Go to askloyal.com. Again, fill out a question. Right behind that will be an application. So if you're really serious about working with me and understanding how to do this for you, fill out the application. One of my team members will call you back. Have a private conversation one-on-one -on -one with you and your family, and we'll get started. I'll talk to you tomorrow.